Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is pick up where we last left off. Now, in the last video, we performed a facing operation. We performed a rough pocket operation on the rectangular pocket, and then we performed a finish profile operation to finish profile the rectangular pocket. Now, one of the things I want to do first before we carry on is I want to take that stock geometry that we created earlier and place it on a separate layer. So to do that, I'm going to turn my print layer back on. That looks good. And you can see our stock defined here by this little rectangle. All right, and again, we had created this in the last video, and we did create it on the print layer. So let's separate this. To do that, we need to first select the rectangle. I'm going to head up and use the option called Select by Chain. I'm going to take my cursor anywhere on the rectangle, left click, and then the direction of selection really doesn't matter here. I'm just going to left click and hit the F3 key on the keyboard to select the rest of the geometry. Now, with the rectangle selected, I can now easily come down to our Edit option in the lower left-hand side of the screen, and where it says layer, I'm going to type in a brand new name. In fact, let's just call it stock. And of course, you can name it anything that you'd like. And by the way, if you don't have your layer parameter, just make sure you click on the little radial button there next to layer, type in that, and then click OK. And that does a couple of things. What it does is it creates a brand new layer called stock, and it also places that rectangle on that layer. So if I turn the print layer off, you can see, there we go, we've got a brand new layer called stock. Very good. All right, now let's take a look at machining this circular pocket. Let's head back over to the Command Manager, go into our stock tool paths, and if we look up here, we could use the pocketing operation, but there is a pocket operation called Clean Circle, which is specifically designed for circular pockets. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to left click. Take my cursor, I'm going to left click the circular pocket, right hand mouse click, and just like with the other previous machining operations, the very first step is defining a tool. Now, I'm going to be using the same exact tool I used for this finished profile operation we performed in the last video. So I'm not going to make any changes to these parameters. I'm going to leave these all exactly the same. Let's click next on this. And then for the final Z, I do want to machine this at minus 14. Now, we're going to make some further modifications to this in just a little bit, but for now, let's leave this exactly as it stands. So with the final Z depth set at minus 14 millimeters, let's click Next. Now we have different approach styles. We could plunge, we can helix, or zigzag entry. I'm going to use a helix approach and I'm going to use the default ramp angle of 3 degrees. Now, we don't need to worry about the tooltip parameters because the tool we're using is just a flat end mill. The only time you'd be concerned with something like this is if you're using a bull nose or ball nose tool. We're going to climb cut. I'll click next on that. For the step over, I'm going to use the same parameter I used last time, which is 75% of the tool diameter. I don't need to take rough depths of cut. I'm going to leave this unchecked because I want to machine this in one depth. I am going to leave 0.25 millimeters on the wall of the pocket. We don't need to worry about the wall taper because the sides of the pocket are straight up and down. Let's click next on that. All right, so here's what we're going to do a little bit differently. Remember in the last video, we performed a rough pocket operation and then we used a separate tool for the finished profile on that pocket. In this example, I'm going to use the exact same tool to rough out the pocket, leave 0.25 millimeters. I'm going to use the same exact tool to come in and remove this 0.25. We can accomplish that by choosing this option called bottom only. Bottom only simply means machine at the very bottom depth of the pocket, and that's exactly what we want. All right, so by selecting bottom only, 1CNC is going to use the exact same tool and it's going to remove this 0.25 millimeters on the side of the pocket. If we want to, we could override the speeds and feeds by clicking here and then you could change the values if you want to. For example, we could up the feed rate to something like maybe 300 and if we want to, we could up the spindle speed as well. 
Very good. So let's click finish on that and let one CNC generate the toolpath. All right, I'm going to rotate this around a little bit and click here on our clean circle machining operation. And this looks pretty good, but I want you to notice something. Look how the helical approach is starting at the very top of the part. Now remember, we've already roughed out and finished this rectangular pocket, so we don't need to have the approach start at such a high Z level. We could have the approach, the helical entry, start a little bit lower. In fact, let me show you what the toolpath looks like right now by simulating. Let's right hand mouse click on the toolpath group, simulate rest. We're going to leave the parameters exactly as we had last time. I'm going to left click the rectangle and then right hand mouse click. All right, let's slow this down. So here is our rectangular roughing operation. There's our finish and look what's happening here. The tool for the circular pocket is starting way up in the air. There's a lot of wasted air cuts there. So how can we fix that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Let's go back into the clean circle machining operation. I'm going to right click. We're going to select edit operation. And what we're going to do is this. We're going to push forward into this dialog box where it says material Z top. The very bottom of that rectangular pocket is at minus seven millimeters. So we can put minus seven as the material Z top. This plunge clearance, this value is an incremental value from material top. So this will work much nicer and we really don't need to change anything else. Let's click next, next, next and finish. And there we go. So let's simulate this so you can see the difference now. All right, so here's our facing operation. Here's our roughing operation for the rectangular pocket. Let's speed this up just a little bit. Here's the finish operation for the rectangular pocket. And watch now for the circular pocket. See how we're starting that approach just a little bit above the floor of the rectangular pocket. And also notice how that pocket operation not only roughed out the pocket, but it also finished profiled around the wall of the pocket as well. All right, let's carry on. Let's take a look now at drilling the holes. I'm going to hit the spacebar twice to quickly go to a CAD view. And let's head over to the command manager. And we have a couple of drill operations. We have drill single and drill hole wizard. For this example, let's use drill single. Now, drill single simply means that we're going to be able to perform a single hole operation to the holes that we select. So I'm going to click on drill single. These are the different methods for selecting the holes that we'd like to drill. I'm going to use arc center and now I can take my cursor and simply just left click the holes in the order that I'd like to drill. And once we're done, we can right hand mouse click and then select finish. All right, so you're probably seeing a pattern here. The very first dialog box, this is where we can select a tool from the library or manually create a tool. I've already created a tool and put it in turret position number four. I set the RPM and feed rate. I have my overall length and flute length set. We're using five millimeters for the diameter. I think all that looks great. Let's click next on that. And then for our clearance values, we have five millimeters, uh, plunge distance set to one millimeter. That's simply where the drill is going to start feeding down. Material Z top zero. And I'm going to drill all the way down to minus 14 millimeters. Now down here, there's two options. There's machine cycles and automatic custom. Machine cycles are great when you want to output a canned cycle, something like a G81, G83, G84, and this is perfect when your CNC machine supports CAN cycles. However, if your CNC machine does not support CAN cycles, you can always check automatic custom, and now when we click next, you can pick whatever style of drilling you'd like and simply fill out the parameters. For this example, I'm going to use machine cycles. We'll click next. I'm going to use a G83 and for the peck amount, I'm going to use three millimeters. I'm going to click finish on that and let one CNC generate the tool path. Very good. Now this training video is getting a little bit long, but I do want to demonstrate how to engrave the text. Now when engraving text, we have several options over here within the command manager. Now one thing to note is that this text is perfectly flat. So the two options would be cut chain 2D or engrave all 2D. 
Now, if I use cutchain 2 d we definitely can use this command, but it's really designed to cut one character at a time. Instead, let's take a look at using the engrave all 2 d command. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to engrave everything that's on the screen. So what we need to do is we need to isolate this text. The easiest way to do that is to simply put this text on a separate layer. We can do that by heading up to our selection tools. This time I'm going to use the marquee or window select option. I'm going to hold the left mouse button down, drag a window around the text just like that and left click. Once that's selected, we're going to head back down into the modify or alter command. We're going to left click that and I'm going to put that on a layer called text. And again, you can use any name that you'd like. Let's click OK to that. And over here within the layer browser, you can see we have a brand new layer called text. We can turn these other layers off if we want to. Very good. And now we've isolated our text. Now let's head back over to the command manager and use our engrave all 2D. Now for the tool, I'm going to put this in turret position number five. I already have the speeds and feeds selected. And for the type of tool, that's really up to you. You can use any type of pointed tool that you'd like. In fact, if you wanted to, you could use something like a center drill. It really makes no difference. Whatever tool you have handy that will work, that's the one you should use. So for this example, I'm going to say that's great. Let's click next on that. We have all of our clearance values. And for the final Z, I'm going to put that at minus 0.1 millimeter. Let's click next on that. I don't need to take this in multiple depths of cut. I really just want to take it in one depth of cut. And that's why I have it set to none. Let's click finish and let one CNC generate the tool path. I think this is looking great. Why don't we finish the video by simulating our toolpath? Let's head back over to the command manager. We're going to right click, select simulate rest. We're going to use the exact same parameters we used before. We'll click OK. I'm going to left click the rectangle and then right hand mouse click. All right, so here's our facing operation. Here is our rough pocket operation for the rectangular pocket. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. Now here's our finish pass going to come up now. There's our finish pass on the rectangular pocket. We're going to use the exact same tool and we're going to spiral down and cut that circular pocket. There's the rough and then come back and there's a nice little finish pass. Now we're going to drill and we're using a can cycle G83 with a cut increment of three millimeters. This is looking good. Now we're going to change tools and we're going to use a center drill to perform our engraving operation. Ah, that's looking great. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. All right, that's it for this training video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.